so so uh, the, the, at the end of the year, I was teaching on a message that God continues to keep me on because uh, I really feel like uh, this is the area where we just need to continue to go deeper. Uh, we need to continue to study, we need to continue to work on. Um, because so much of our anxiety, our frustration, um, our non-clinical depression, right? Amen. Right, because there is clinical depression, which is a, a different thing. And if you have clinical depression, please make sure you see a doctor and get under therapy. Um, uh, that's very, very important. Amen. There's no stigma around that, all right? Um, but our frustration, our anxiety, our non-clinical depression, uh, our sadness comes from this area of our believing and receiving system. If, if we're receiving what we're believing, we're happy, right? But when we don't receive the deepest things of, that we're trying to believe, we get a little frustrated. Yeah. So what I need you to know, though, is that everything you are currently receiving hmm. is absolutely dependent on what you have been believing. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Amen. I'm going to say it again. So, so, so all the things that you and I are receiving, good and bad, are based upon some beliefs we've had that have been good and bad. Mm -hmm. So how many have some things that you have been praying for God that you would receive that you have not yet received? Y'all got one hand raised, you got more than more than that? <laughs> right? You got the feet, feet up, you know? Excuse me, there's a lot of things I've been praying for I ain't received yet, okay? This is so important to realize that what we're receiving is based upon what we're believing. And if we're not receiving his promises, it may be because we're not believing his promises. You catch that? All right? So right now, think about your life for a moment. Think about what you're receiving. It's Jesus. What's up, Jesus? <laughs> Heaven is calling right now. Jesus is on the main line calling up. <laughs> I want you to take a moment. I want you to think about your life. What are the areas in your life that you aren't quite receiving what you know God has promised you? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Take a moment. What are the areas where you're saying, God, you know, I'm still waiting to receive the breakthrough in my career? Yes, yes, bridge. <laughs> I'm still waiting to receive the, the breakthrough in my relationship. I'm still waiting to receive enough money so I'm not living check to check. Yeah, oh God, that's good. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Come on. I'm still waiting to receive, dear Lord, the answer to this prayer of why am I in Los Angeles? I'm still waiting. And, and here's the reality, though. The reality is we'll get into the text in a minute, which is those areas where we are focused on that we don't see are disrupting what he's trying to do. Because see, here's what happens. Here's what happens. So every day we wake up, we're blessed. Amen. Yeah. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. But then I didn't get the breakthrough I wanted in my career that day. I didn't get the audition. I didn't get the callback. So I focus on what I don't have. And what I don't receive. And my focus on what I don't receive contradicts the fact that I'm blessed. Yes, yes that's good. Right. I'm going to go deeper. It's, it's like, again, I'll just use this analogy real quick. If you're an actor, right? Why is that belief shaken by what a casting director may or may not do? Think about it. If I am, I am. It, it just may take the hundredth audition. But then, but then see, here, see here's, but here's why, here's why this is important. Because see, sometimes we can believe, but only for a little bit. 
Huh? Yes. Oh, Lord, I was believing real strong. Yes. Come on, some of y'all, you had New Year's resolutions. They gone. Yeah. You ain't done one of them. Right? Because we can, we can be good. We can, we can have discipline for a little bit. But don't ask me to endure. Don't ask me to hang in there. No, 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 my belief system starts to get shaken. Mm. Hebrews 11, chapter 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of what I don't see. So if I'm in faith over receiving what God has promised, and I don't see it, you, we should be thanking God for the evidence. You're missing it. How many, there's some things you don't see. You don't see the check coming. Come on, who am I talking to? You don't see the money coming? There's your evidence. Praise him right now because it's on the way. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sir, anybody need like a real financial breakthrough? Who am I talking about? Anybody need like a real financial breakthrough? Like a real financial breakthrough. See, she's like my sister Steph. She's there. Yes. Yes. So then I want you to say, Lord. Thank you, Thank you for the evidence of my financial breakthrough. Now, do you realize the enemy is mad, right? And, 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 and there's a part of you that wants you to say, well, you ain't got the money. But no, no, when you speak it, you say thank you for the evidence, you are putting the enemy on notice. I'm going to believe it because I know what's on the way. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of what I don't see. So it's almost like the more I'm in belief, I don't need to see it because I know what's going to happen. You catch that? Because so often we get so dependent on our faith being confirmed every step of the way that we never walk in faith. That's right. Think about it. If I'm walking in faith, it means I'm walking in some areas where I don't yet have evidence that I should even be in that area. But because I've spent some time with him and he's downloaded what I should be believing, my belief is guiding my direction, but I don't yet have evidence. Mm. See, here's the reality. Uh, the evidence is sometimes on tape delay. You know what a tape delay is? You, so if you ever go on live television, there's a five-second tape delay. So if you're in the room, what's happening in the room is ahead of what gets projected on the screen. So, so our faith is ahead of what's coming. You get that? Amen. Because I'm believing for some things, and my belief is saying, I'm going to be walking in the area where there's no evidence. It may take a moment for the evidence to catch up with my walk. Mm. Ah, this is so important. So important. Because if we don't learn the power of walking in faith, we're going to miss the whole foundation of having a relationship with him. Amen. The book of Romans says it's our faith that makes us acceptable to him. Amen. Our faith. Yeah. Not our love. Right? Not our thoughts. Our faith. Because we have to believe that he is by faith. Am I right? Yeah. And this is the area where the enemy attacks us the most. Right? So watch this. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Some of y'all knocked once. Well, they, ain't nobody home. Huh? Come on. Why you stop knocking? Huh? You play hide and go seek. You just say, hey, well, then I can't find it. It is so important for this year, if you are going to be who God called you to be, if you're going to do what he's called you to do, if you're going to receive what he asked for you, 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 you got to like say, you know what? I don't care what I've seen. I don't care what nobody says. I believe what he told me is going to happen. And I am going to stay committed until I see it come to pass. It may be 365 days. It may be 3,650 days. It don't matter. I'm going to put time. Because in, in terms of eternity, what is time? Why do we keep putting a time clock on God? And God is saying, it with me, there is no time. I'm eternal. And here we are judging God because he ain't done something in three hours. God said, I'm God. I'm going to do it in my time. How about staying committed? Keep knocking. 
Turn to your neighbor and say, you've got to keep knocking. Mm -mm. Keep ringing the doorbell. Annoy some people. I'm going to go back to the acting example. You want these cash directors to say, you here again? We don't have five movies. We ain't cast you in nothing. I know it. I can't wait for you to put me in the sixth one. I'm going to keep showing up. Come on. Because if you don't have the mentality and the mind frame, it ain't going to happen. The first praise song was big. If you do not live big here, you, you can't handle big. Because guess what? Here's the other thing. Anything you don't believe that you receive, you will reject it. Anything you don't believe that you happen to receive, you'll reject it. So like, let's say um, you may have some issues of insecurity. And, and someone comes into your life in a dating situation that you may say is like in another, on another level. You are going to find yourself self-sabotaging that relationship. Wow. Because that person may be above your belief system. I'm just going to pause right there. Somebody's like, oh man, you hurt me on that one. Right? It's impossible for us to hold what we don't believe. I said this uh, in the first time we taught this message. 90% of, of uh, I think that's more of a, a hyperbole, but in terms of statistics, but the majority of the people that win lottery end up losing it. Because if you didn't have a million dollar belief before getting the million dollars, you can't receive it because you don't know how to handle it. This is why you got to start getting big in your thoughts and in your faith walk. If you really believe God is going to deliver bigness to your life. Amen. So important. So watch this. This is the crux of the text and we're going to be done in 25 minutes. Watch. Mark 11. <laughs> verse 12. The next day as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry, seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf. Mm. He went to find out if it had any fruit. So it's a fig tree. He saw the leaves, which indicated there should be some fruit. When he reached it, he was surprised. He found nothing but leaves because it was not in season for figs. Then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And the disciples heard him say it. I got to pause here. I, I can't spend a lot of time here tonight, but my goodness, I want to come back to this. Because see, we live in a town of trees like this. See, see, here's the danger. Uh, if if, if y'all are here, I'm going to assume for a moment that most of you have, have an understanding of God and understanding of Jesus, right? I'm just going to assume that for the moment. Now, here's the danger. Um, if you are in this town and you say, oh, yeah, I know God and God is good and, and, and all the time. And, and then all of a sudden, people come to you and have a spiritual need. And they realize Oh, you were just saying. Now, see, listen, I, I'm not listen. I'm not trying to get in your business, but I am trying to get in your business. See, see, see. Listen, I don't listen. Listen, here's all we say, right? I, I know we all like to go and have a good time. I, I'm not saying you shouldn't have a good time. I'm not saying you shouldn't. Eat it. I'm not saying. Okay, okay. But but here's the thing. Ah, ah, see, see, see. You can you can still you can, let me say this. Um, you you can still go to an environment, right? And still preserve your morality and your spirituality. Um, just because they're getting turned up don't mean you have to get turned up and turned down. Right? But 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 somebody may see you and say, oh, that person, wow, there's their walk is so powerful. And then they see you in certain environments and they say, What? You doing what I'm doing. So what's the difference? I love you. I love you. But here's why I'm saying it. Are you presenting something that you're not? And if you aren't yet at the place where you're, you're strong enough, here's all I want to ask you to do. Be honest with where you are. And say, Lord, I know where I want to be, but help me not present an image. But who I really am is different. So, you know, and again, I'm not talking about anything I don't know. So, you know, it's like, again, I've told part of my testimony and I'll share it for those who, who are here for the first time. See, you know, uh, growing up, I was, I was raised in the church. 
You know, when I was raised, like, okay, you know, wait uh, until marriage to have sex. That's what I was, that was and, and no one said, why? They just said, do it. <laughs> Am I right? right? So I'm like, okay, well, fine, I'm just going to do it. So I was presenting everybody I was going to do it. And then I got in a relationship, senior year of high school. And guess what? I, I did it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, hey, the weight went out the window then. Right? But here's the thing. I was still presenting the image that I wasn't doing it. Because I wanted people to look at me and say, well, look at my fruit. <laughs> but Jesus knew I, I was just showing leaves. And so for me personally, this went on for years. I'm presenting this image. Oh, yeah, I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. Wow. Man. <laughs> the furthest from it. All right? But what began to happen is that there was no peace between who I was presenting and who I was. Because I knew I was fooling people. I'm sitting out here, you know, preaching the word, teaching people how to live, and I'm going home doing something totally different. So I had to get you to a place where I said, you know, even if it's a sacrifice and it's difficult, I got to reconcile who I am in public, who I am in private. The two have to be the same. So the person you get now is the person, is the same person at home. But I had to reconcile that in order for the fruit to come onto my tree. So that what people saw is what they got. And let me tell you, was it easy? No. But let me tell you something. Having peace. Peace. Peace was worth the sacrifice. Because I could look at myself in the mirror and say, hey, I know who I am. And people would be like, are you crazy? What are you doing? Da, 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 da. I'm like, listen, I ain't worried about you, but I got peace. Amen. How do you know if you're going in the right direction? How do you feel about it? How's your peace? Amen. Amen. Ah, ah, I got to say a quick commercial break. I'm coming right back to our, our regular schedule program. Stop letting people drink you out of your peace. Ah, yes. I'm just going, mm, you see, see what happens is you're at peace. You said, I'm going to go hang out. You are at peace. You're like, I'm not drinking tonight. And they were like, come on, take a shot. Come on, you know you like this Hennessy. Come on, take this patrol. Come on, little Ciroc ain't going to hurt you. And all of a sudden, you find yourself doing something you didn't really want to do. And at the end of the night, what do you have to show for it? Your peace was gone, drunk down the bottle. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but stop letting people influence you out of your peace. Ah, just because they do doesn't mean you have to. Seriously, and again, you notice what I'm saying, right? Here's what I'm saying. I'm not saying what sometimes we hear traditionally in church is don't go. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Because there'll be some situations, you know, especially in this business, where you gotta go. It's about what you do when you're there. And your intent for being there. Right? Yeah, yeah. Now y'all, you, you ain't heard this guy teach me. But I'm trying to keep it real. No, I'm serious. I'm trying to keep it real. I ain't, I'm not, I, no, no, I'm not going to give you any of these platitudes that you normally get. I'm keeping it real. Because we live in a world that's full of nuance. And so you're going to find yourself in certain environments. And I'm just saying, make sure that who you present yourself to be is who you really are. And if there's an area you're struggling, that's okay. We all struggle. Just say, God, help me in this struggle. And may I submit your consideration, if you're struggling in certain areas, then resist the temptation to put yourself in an environment that's going to make it harder for you to be strong. <sighs> this means some of y'all, you, some, man, listen, some of y'all got plans tonight. You have to cancel them. <laughs> Turn your neck, you got to cancel your plans. <laughs> you have to cancel your plans. Because you're not strong enough to go where you were trying to go. I'm talking to somebody tonight. Let me get back in my word. We got 20 minutes to go. He curses the tree. May no one ever eat fruit from it again. No, from you again. That's what he, he literally is talking to the tree. I want to fast forward to verse 20 in Mark chapter 11. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. 
So the tree that had the leaves but no fruit, Jesus says, no one will eat fruit from you again. The next day in the morning, the fig tree that he cursed was withered, withered from the roots. Then Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Verse 22, Jesus says, have faith in God. Jesus answered, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what they have just said will happen. It will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. I want to pause right there. The fig tree has withered. And the disciple Peter says, Lord, this was the tree you cursed. And immediately Jesus uses the tree as a lesson to talk about believing and receiving in faith. Because he spoke to the tree and he believed what he said would manifest. So the next day, Jesus was not surprised that he had received what he believed, which is no one was ever going to eat from this tree again. Mm. I have a question for you. What are you currently believing? You know what belief means? Belief means accepting something is true. Okay. So, I want to just break this down for a moment. There are things that we accept that are true and not true. All right. But if we accept things that are not true and we treat them as if they're true, wow. they will operate in our life as if they are true. Yeah. Yeah. You missed it. You catch it? You catch it? So, so here's what that means. Uh, so, um, uh, growing up, right? Like I was, I was taught, you know, I'm a middle child, three boys, and so many people told me, you know, uh, it's never going to happen. You know what I mean? You don't have what it takes to make it. Uh, growing up as a young kid, I never felt good enough, right? Right? Anybody been there before? You know what I mean? We just never felt good enough. You never felt fully accepted. You know, I, I was the odd, you know, man out. I mean, they called me an L7 growing up. Y'all know what that is? It's square, okay? You know, I mean, because I was just different, all right? And I didn't fit in anyone's box. So here's the reality. There were parts, times in my life where God didn't say those things. People said those things. But I began to believe those things. So even though they were not true, I began to believe them as if they were. And as a result, I was receiving whatever I was believing. That I wasn't good enough. That I wasn't capable enough. That I was never going to have, you know, a, a community and friends and whatnot. I would believe those things. So I have to pause right here. I want to start on one side, which is, what are you accepting right now that's just not true? What are you accepting right now that's not true? Are you accepting that, I don't know if this is going to happen. You know, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Why wouldn't you make it? People with less talent than you? Come on. Less intellect than you have made it. You can make it too. What's the difference between them and you? Nothing. Belief. Nothing. Nothing. You know, look, no matter what you may think of Cardi B, right? No, I mean, seriously. No, no, no. Think about this, though. Think about this, though. Think about it. There was a time in her life when she was having a life, that, but she dreamed of something different. Right. So no matter what you may think of her, others said, no, this is who you are. Mm -hmm. She said, no, I may be doing this, but it's not who I am. Mm -hmm. It's so important to ask yourself the question, where in my life am I accepting something that's not true? Mm -hmm. Let me go deeper. A lot of times, the things we accept that are not true is because we've allowed someone else to program our belief system. Amen. Amen. Think about it. Are you living for yourself or because your parents told you something? Mm. That's good. Yeah. Or, you, or certain family members said, hey, mm. you know, it's so interesting. You know, I, I love family, but man, they can, they can do the damage on us. Right? 
right maybe to say these things and, right. and don't even apologize. Just say stuff that can just stick in your spirit and cut you down, you know, and, and you're supposed to love them. But man, that's, that was me. My friends would never say stuff like that, right? Who have you allowed to program your belief system about you? Why are you believing that you're going to be alone the rest of your life? Hmm? What'd she say? What'd she say? Oh, she said, that's what I'm not going to do. Amen. That's right. You ain't going to do that. That's right. No, but, but think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Because here's what happens. Here's what happens. If, if you get into a place where you start to believe, well, this is how it's going to be. You start to live as if this is how it's going to be. And according to your faith, be it unto you. If you say this is how it's going to be, that's what it's going to be. This is why anytime you find yourself latching onto a belief that does not align with what you are believing you're going to receive, you got to reject it. No, 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 no. No, 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 uh-uh, uh-uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm not, I'm not single, right, I'm not single, you know what I mean, the relationship is, is just on it, it's, it's materialized as we speak, uh-uh, no, 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 you get, get, get what I'm saying, man, okay, I gotta say one thing, anybody watch The Bachelor, anybody watch The Bachelor, y'all, man, let me tell you, Megan to mess me up, mess me up, you know, it's the truth. I wouldn't think about no bachelor until Megan had me watching. Now I'm hooked. I'm hooked. I need a bachelor's anonymous or whatever. Man, I need, I need my help. Anyway, here's what's so interesting though. Here, watch, watch this. We're talking about believing in the secret. Watch this. Last night, Peter's the bachelor. Oh, we're going to break this thing down. And, and he's down to three women. Right? Victoria P., Hannah Ann, and Madison. Oh, we got it all. I'm watching. I'm just saying, this is what's going on, right? So watch this, watch this. Madison goes to Peter. Because this is the episode of, of the fantasy suites. And, 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 and I'm going to be honest, ain't nothing holy or Christian about no fantasy suite. They don't be doing no praying, amen? Okay, so watch this, watch this, watch this. Madison goes to Peter and says, I'm not trying to tell you what you should or shouldn't do. But I'm here to tell you that you know, if in a week's time, I might be one of the women that you're going to propose to. I might be the one you propose to in one week. Because of my beliefs, and she's a Christian, because of my beliefs, if you sleep with another woman, you're going to lose me. But I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Right? Oh, this is good. Because she had a belief system. And she was speaking what she wanted to receive. A husband who would love her enough that he may sacrifice his flesh. Because he sees in her the future. Ah, my brothers, my brothers, my brothers. Oh, all the men in the house, I got to talk to you real quick. If you give yourself over to your flesh, you may miss your future. Because the flesh will produce death, but the spirit produces life. And sometimes when you've got somebody in your life that has the potential to go the distance, you got to sacrifice your desire. When she says, I want to wait, it may be the hardest thing you do, but it's the best thing you do. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but sometimes as a man, you got to sacrifice your flesh. Do you want it? Yes, but that doesn't mean you have to do it. Sorry. Stay in my notes. So, fantasy suites happen. The bachelor producers are crazy. They put all the three women in one room, and they were there when each woman came back from their date. Yes. So Hannah Ann goes on her date. She comes back looking guilty. <laughs> and Madison is like, hey, how did it go? Oh, it was fine. Yeah, okay. Victoria P goes. She comes back the next morning. This giddy look on her face. Oh boy. Madison goes on the day. She sits down with Peter. And she says, look. You know, listen. I just got to know. Well, you know, I'm not trying to get in your business. But we're supposed to have truth. 
you supposed you, you might propose to me in a week. I gotta know. I'm gonna pause right here. Sometimes, you know, as a man, you try to manipulate a situation. Yeah. 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 She's asking a direct question. It's yes or no. It ain't multiple choice. And you know how it is. You know you're like, well, 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 what do you mean? Like, tell me again what you said. I'm trying to throw her off. Ladies, let me tell you, you gotta stay focused on your question. Alright? Don't, don't, don't let him get mad with no vague answer. And then don't let him get mad at you because you asked the question. Don't let him flip the script. You better keep control. I'm talking to somebody. Brothers, I love you. I love you, brothers. That's what I'm saying. I love you. Amen. Because sometimes we're our own worst enemy. Am I right? But to Peter's credit, to Peter's credit, he said, I'm not going to give you the details, but I have been intimate. And she said, Thank you. And she got up and said, I, I got I got I got go. She picks up from the table. She's all outside thinking about like I can't believe this. Am I really gonna go? He comes and, and grabs her and he starts to say, Oh baby, you know, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. No, this is true. I'm so sorry I hurt you. I'm so sorry. And she was like, Yeah, I am too. Out. Peace. Go. Go. Why? Because you're you're asking me to receive something that is beneath what I'm believing. And I don't want it, so I don't have to rece receive it. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. You don't have to receive everything that comes your way. You should start rejecting what's not aligning with what you're believing. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. And in that way, crazy. Oh, who does she think she is? And da 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 da. She is a woman that knows her worth. She told you what she wanted. And if you didn't, couldn't do it, that's on you, not on her. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but all the ladies in the house, be okay with what you believe. Stand firm in your conviction. Don't let a man manipulate you. Because I'm here to tell you, as men, sometimes all we want is what you can give, not who you are. And the only way that Peter would ever come to his senses is through the pain of losing her. And now they showed the preview for next week, and he done lost his mind. He about to leave both Hannah Ann and Victoria P at the altar because he's lost. Why? Because it's about what you don't do, not about what you do that will get you what you want. Who am I talking to right now? I'm tired of this generation saying you got to give up and take. No, no, no. Sometimes hold back. Because if you're giving what everybody else is giving, what differentiates you? What differenti differentiates you? Huh? And then what I love though is Peter had to think. He realized in that moment, just because it's offered, doesn't mean I have to take it. Y'all, man, I'm telling y'all my truth right now. I'm telling you my truth. Oh boy. Do you know while I was waiting, before I got married, uh, I would be in situations and dating and whatnot, and because uh, even if you are of faith or not of faith, um, you know, sex is just seems to be a part of dating. Don't say it, man, don't out yourself, okay? Don't do that. Just say it in your spirit, it's okay. Okay? But see, I wasn't doing that. I wasn't doing that. So when I would be, uh, you know, dating a woman, and, she, and, I, and she's like, hey, is this what you want to do? I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm waiting. And then she'd be like, well, are you, are you not attracted to me? What's wrong? Like, what's wrong? Like, are you straight? Like, what's up? No, 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 no. But see, here's the thing. Most men are like, what do you mean am I straight? Let me show you. No, no. I ain't got nothing to do with you. I know who I am. I know what I want to receive. I know what I believe. And if I do this with you, I'm not going to receive what I believe. What I believe. Right? So, it's okay for people to not understand your conviction and your commitment. That doesn't mean just because everybody else is doing it, that's what you got to do. And this can be applied to anything. Because God speaks uniquely to all of us about our belief system. There are specific dreams and visions he's put in each one of us. That if you were to voice it, people would say, oh, that's crazy. But that's how you know it's God. Right? Right? Think about it. If it ain't crazy, I, I, I argue it ain't God. Amen. Because when God gets a hold of our life, he does things that others say could not be done. Amen. Right? That's what he does. Period. in the story. But so often, we limit even God's power to operate in our, our life because we're not believing. What does the text say? 
Jesus says, first, have faith in God. You must believe he is who he says he is. And he has the power to do what he said he will do. If you don't believe that, we can stop right there. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if you and I have evidence that God is who he is, and we've seen him show up in our life before, right. Amen. why are we doubting him now? Right. Why? How many have evidence that God has showed up in your life more than once? Come on. Wave your hands. Come on. Wave your hands. Okay. So why are you doubting him now? Why? Why? It doesn't even make sense because we don't have a good excuse. So anytime we start to doubt him, this is when we have to go back and say, oh God, yeah, you did do that. Okay. There were some things that I was starting to doubt today and I was like, God, why am I doing that? I was like, no, I'm not going to choose that. Earlier this week I did a prayer about our thoughts, right? You know, thoughts will come in. Not every thought that you have, you have to accept. Amen. Yeah. There are some thoughts that come upon you and you say, no, 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 that isn't aligned with my beliefs, it's a rejected. Yeah. No, 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 that's not the thought process of somebody who's about to turn this town upside down. Amen. Come on, that's not the thought process of somebody who is the head, not the tail. That's not the thought process of somebody who has more than enough. Come on, we got to start even controlling our thoughts. Watch this, I'm going to keep going. Have faith in God. One, you got to believe who he says he is. And you got to believe he will do everything he said he will do. I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself in the sea and does not doubt. What does doubt mean? It means to be divided in your mind. Divided in your mind. Divided in your mind. Man. How often? Do we, it, it, it's like we're, we're, we're so complex, we will pray for something and not believe it all at the same time. Who am I talking to? Come on, who am I talking to? Come on, don't leave me hanging. Who am I talking to? You ever been there before? Lord, I'm, please, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm praying, God, that you would do this. And at the same time, Lord, I don't even think you're going to do it. <laughs> we're divided in our mind. That means we're doubting. In order to have faith, we cannot be divided in our mind about what he's going to do and what we believe he's going to do. What is the area in your life or areas where you find yourself divided? Where your mind is of two minds. Like, okay, yeah, Lord, I, 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 I know you're, I believe you're going to do it, but I don't see it, so I'm not sure. I'm divided. Right? Mm. And a house divided cannot stand. Mm. Even if it's the house of your mind. The house of my mind. So, so what I have to do is I have to reconcile every time this, I mean, I, I practice this. Every time a, a thought or I see something that does not align with what I'm believing, I acknowledge it and say, okay, I understand this is here. Right? Like, you know, I just, just, <laughs> I just uh, you know, uh, moved my company. I got to deal with Paramount. I have a new office and all this kind of stuff, right? And, you know, amen. Praise amen. God. Amen. Amen. All good stuff. But, but you know, like, sometimes uh, people will call me um, with projects that I'm like, this is not what I want to do. You know? So instead of getting mad or upset, I say, no, that's not me. I may turn down 50 projects to get one. Yeah. But it's not about the ones you turn down. It's only about the ones you see. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's so important to remember this. You've got to unify your mind. Mm -hmm. Unify your mind. What is the area where you're the divided the most? Because the enemy wants you to look at reality and say, well, my reality says I'm never going to make seven figures. I'm never going to, you know, uh, travel the world. No, I'm divided. Like, I know what God's promises are, but I'm divided because I don't actually see it. Versus saying, I understand what I'm seeing, but I'm not going to misinterpret that. Yeah. Me seeing it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It just means that what I'm praying for is closer than I think. Amen. That's where we go back to, oh, I have a lot of evidence. 
Lord, I'm, and don't ever, and listen, stop saying you're broke. Stop saying, you're not broke. You are not broke. You are not broke. Amen. Amen. You got to bless the money that's coming to you. Amen. Come on. Come on. You are not broke because then all of a sudden you start to act broke. Uh-uh. No, I ain't acting broke. Uh-uh. No, no, listen. I got, I have the money to afford it. I'm just waiting for it to get to me. Oh, my goodness, man. I, I, listen, the car I got is amazing. Where is it? It's still in the lot. But you know what? It's coming to me. I already know. Where's your house? Let me show you my house. I'm going to show you right here. But you don't own it. What you mean I don't own it? How do you know? Right? Come on, somebody. Stop saying what you're not and start affirming what you are. Come on. All right. We're almost done. We're almost done. Does not doubt in his heart. Don't be divided in your mind. But believes, accepts what is true. That what they have said will happen, will be done for them. Hold on. This is not the part that I really like. That's good. But this part gets me excited. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, past tense. I'm in the present, but I'm supposed to have an action that has a past tense as if I've already got it. And then what I'm believing I already got will then find its way into the present. Okay, I'm going to talk to this side real quick. You, you, you don't look like you are acting as if you received what you're believing. How do I know? Because I walked in here, y'all down. I'm going to come to y'all in a minute, you down. Look a little depressed, non-clinically. No, I say that because, you know, if you, are, if you have clinical depression, that's a big deal. So I don't want to disparage that. Right? Yeah. Your shoulders all down. And I'm thinking, if you if you were acting like you really received what you believe in, yeah. you're skipping up in here. Yeah. You're like, do you know what I drive? Do you know who I do you know the meeting I just got out of? Do you know how good God is? I didn't even have to ask for certain things that He already did. Do you understand? I'm so blessed, I can't even stand myself that I'm so blessed. The cup is running over and it's overflowing. This is how blessed I am. And coming up in the house, and if you came in the house like that. You can't be stopped. But then your friend wanna say, you barely got gas in your car. What you talking about? I'm just ready for a filler. Come on, somebody. You, you, listen to me. You, 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 we, we gotta start acting as if we've received it. Because what does that do? It builds confidence. It builds confidence. It builds courage. People can smell your confidence or your fear on you. People can smell your defeat. We serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and we're going to walk into a situation defeated? Mm. Let me tell you, again, I'm using, I'm using, I know I'm this acting analogy. If you're not an actor, just apply it to whatever you are. So, so you know, here's the thing. If you don't go in the room and audition like you're Denzel or you're Halle or pick your actor, it, they can smell it on you the moment you are. Oh, this part, mm. I've been in the casting sessions. You gotta act like you've received it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so think about here's here's how you do it. Put yourself in the emotion of how you would act if you actually had it, right. and that's how you act when you don't. You catch that? All right. So now I'm gonna talk to both of y'all. Do you catch that? Yes. Before I was a producer, I already acted like I was a producer. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, it was never a question of if I was going to have the company. It was just a matter of winning. Right. And so as a result, I would handle myself with the confidence I knew what was going to happen. And this was even when I was an assistant. When I'm answering the phones and I'm, I'm doing the schedule for somebody else, people would come in the, the, the company and say, who is this guy? Why? Because I didn't allow the position to get me out of my purpose. I might have been an assistant, but that was for the moment. I know that I have greater than assistant destiny on my life because I knew what God had spoken to me. There are some that God says, hey, if you're an assistant, great, and that's what you choose to do, and he's called you to do it, he's going to elevate you in that. There's nothing wrong with being an assistant. 
the issue is when you're doing something that is different than what God has called you to do it. And as a result, you're getting depressed and saying, oh, okay, God, you're going to use this. All things work together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. So instead of being mad, God, why do I have to flip these burgers? Why do I have to, you know, uh, wait, bust these tables? God, thank you for this opportunity. It must be you're going to use it. That means while I'm busting these tables, I'm going to come in contact with somebody who can actually set me up for what you promised. So instead of going in with a nasty attitude and being upset, I'm going to go in with the joy of the Lord. Why? Because it's my strength. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but if you were acting like you received it, your whole life would change. Your whole life would change. And you, you would change the atmosphere of wherever you go in. Seriously. I'm, and I'm not telling you what I think sounds good. I'm telling you what I know. Seriously. Do you realize, like I told you all a little bit of my testimony uh, about the company. You know, there was a period of time I didn't even know if I was going to be able to, to first keep the company going because I didn't know what the deal was going to be. You know, Fox bought Disney and Disney was dissolving Fox and all that good stuff. And when I had my meetings with Paramount, do you think I went there and said, oh man, I hope y'all give me a day. God bless your heart. I'm like, man, hey, yeah, I'm come on, Franklin. I'm so glad you 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 decided you want to meet with me. Cause I'm, I'm in demand. I'm in demand. I ain't got one studio that called me but you, but I'm in demand. Come on, somebody, you gotta think about it. I've already received the deal. I've already received it because I'm not gonna go in there wearing this old. Oh, I wonder. No, I know who I am. I know God. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? And here's the beauty. Let's say there was no deal. How do I interpret that? Oh. God, you must have something else you want for me to do that's going to be more fulfilling, that's going to be more rewarding. So let me not get so attached to a thing that I miss you. I'm talking to somebody right now. You got to believe that you received it. You got to believe that you received it. You got to. And, and let me tell you something. This is a daily practice. Daily. I mean, I, I can do a whole session, I'm not going to do it tonight, about, about getting up early and, and working on your mind. Yeah. Work on your mind. Pray, meditate, affirm, write, spend some time with yourself and God before you hit the day. Seriously. Think about it. How often do you sit down and plan for your mind and your life? Very rare, right? We're running, we're going. We're watching, we're doing. Take some time. Say, God, okay, what are the areas I'm believing in? How do I need to change my posture? You know, okay, I believe that I'm going to be moving soon. <clears throat> Have I prepared for that move yet? No. Okay, so what do I need to do? All right, maybe I should start packing up a little bit. Because I believe I have the new place. Right? Lord, I'm, I'm unemployed and I'm believing for a new job. Okay, how would I act if I received it? Well, I would get up in the morning and get dressed. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, I'm going to start getting dressed with the outfit I would wear to work. Because I believe I received the job. It's just on its way to me. Amen. You catch that? Yeah. Lord, I'm believing you're, you're going to deliver a new car. Yeah. So how would I act if I had the car I really wanted? i keep that thing clean. Yeah. I better start cleaning my car. Yeah. I'm talking to somebody. Believing for the new can't handle what you got. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. you're acting like I've received it. Yeah. If you're waiting for love, okay, how would I act if I was waiting for love? I wouldn't be anxious. I got it. Right. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm good. When you and I begin to operate in that, that becomes our power source. Yeah. And then the Bible says it will be ours. Amen. Right? I believe that, that uh, all the things that, that he calls us to believe as we begin to operate in this, if he has called us to believe, we will receive it. Mm -hmm. If he's called us to believe, we will receive it. How do you know if your beliefs are aligned with what he wants you to believe? Mm -hmm. This is where you got to spend time with him. Mm -hmm. Hey, God, I'm, I'm having this belief. Is this right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it is. Is it right? Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, because he loves us so much, as we believe... And as we have a posture of receiving, we're going to start to see evidence one way or another. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he knows. He knows. He's like, I know y'all need faith. I get it. But I'm going to give you a little bit of evidence to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> I'm gonna give you some confirmation. Don't worry. It's gonna come. I know, I know you're flesh and spirit. You're flesh and spirit. Right? Why is this important? Because I believe this is the key. This is the key to where you are and where he wants you to be. I want you to receive everything that he is calling you to believe. Amen. But the only thing standing in between, whether you receive it or not, is you and me. That's one of the hardest lessons I had to learn. There are some things I was, you know, been praying for, and, you know, thinking, oh, it's, you know, this person doesn't see me, and, you know, that person's holding back an opportunity, and only if this person would do that would I have that. Yes. And I and I started to realize. If I keep living that way, I'll be outsourcing what I'm supposed to do to something that may never happen. Why don't I just stay in a place of belief no matter what they think or do? I got some big dreams. If y'all think I'm living my dream now, you ain't seen nothing. You ain't seen nothing. I'm telling you, you ain't seen nothing. And I'm looking at you and I'm saying to you, you ain't seen nothing. Wait till you see what God's getting ready, ready to do in your life. But the key is to get into this posture. Jesus said, according to your faith, be unto you. Now the last thing he says in the text is this. He says you must forgive those that have offended you. So that your father in heaven will forgive you of your sins. Hmm. Yeah. What does forgive mean? Release from obligation. Wow. And when you stand praying, this is what Jesus says, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them. Release them from their obligation so that your Father in heaven may forgive you of your sins. Yeah. We've all fallen short. We've all missed the mark. Don't allow your unforgiveness of whoever may have offended you legitimately yes, yes. to block what God is trying to do. Wow. There are situations that were wrong. They were not right. You didn't ask for them. Yes. Pray. And th there's a tendency to want to hold on and, and to say, no, I'm never going to. They should have never. I'm not, I'm not saying you're ever going to forget what someone may have done. But I am asking you to release them from the obligation. Yes. Yes. Because as you release them, you free yourself. Amen. Because how many obligations has God released us from? Amen. How many sins have we committed that he has not held against us? Oh, wow. <laughs> so important. As you freely have received, freely give. Yes. Yes. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but it's so important. There's someone here right now, you, you've been having some issues with unforgiveness. I want you to stand right now. If you've been harboring unforgiveness in your heart against a person, a situation, a deal, uh, you know, a family member, a friend, an old relationship. Uh, it could be, you know, somebody that you're, that you're in a relationship with now and, you're, and you, you have not forgiven them. God is asking me to ask you to let it go. This unforgiveness has been tearing up your spirit. It's been holding you back. It's been the weight. See, see, uh, some of you, 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 you wake up in the morning and, and you're, you're not in joy. You're not happy. Because this unforgiveness is like in your spirit so deep. It pulls you back. What happened to you was real. I'm not asking you, I'm not asking you to forget it because it's true. It happened. But what I'm asking you to do is to free yourself and that person from the obligation. There may be some people that just don't have the capacity for whatever reason to apologize to you appropriately. Yes, sir. They just, they just, so, so if you hold out forgiveness for someone to apologize and that apology never comes, does that mean this is how you're supposed to live the rest of your life? I'm asking you, according to the, the words of our Savior, Jesus Christ, Forgive them. Release them from their obligation. So that you can be free. I understand that it's hard. I know that it's difficult. But I believe that if you do that, as I have done it, 
the freedom that you get is far worth going through the pain that you have to get through the process. Do me a favor. I want you to raise both of your hands if you're standing. Raise both of your hands if you're standing. This is the international sign of surrender. So as, as you have your hands raised, I'm asking you to surrender this unforgiveness to God. I'm asking you to, to just talk to God for a moment and say, Lord, you know, I, I, I don't want to hold this any longer. So I'm, I'm, I'm literally, Lord, I'm giving this to you. And Lord, help me free this person that I have not forgiven. Help me free this person from the obligation. Because I want to be free. Anybody want to be free? Yeah. Say, Lord, I want to be free. Lord, I need to be free. Lord, I was created to be free. I pray right now, dear Heavenly Father, for every person standing. I pray right now, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, that unforgiveness would no longer be the bitter pill in their spirit. I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you would put within them the capacity to do something they never thought they could do, which is to forgive the person who did the unforgivable. I pray, dear God, that you would go before them and fight their battles. And anyone who has wronged them, dear Lord, I pray that you will be the one that handles that. Yes. But I'm asking, dear God, that anyone right now that is standing, that you would release them from the obligation of unforgiveness. And that tonight would be a night where they have felt free, more free than they have in recent memory, because they chose to forgive. They may have forgiven a mother, a father, a friend, a family member, a business associate, uh, a cousin, it doesn't matter to God. I pray that they would be free. And the and Lord, in the word it says, when the sun sets free, is free indeed. <sighs> now, as you're standing, if there's anybody else that just needs to be free from whatever, free from unbelief, free from fear, I'm asking that you stand, too. free from uh, anxiety, free from your frustration, I'm asking that you would stand. Do me a favor, grab your neighbor's hand if you will. Grab your neighbor's hand if you will. And we're close. You can go across the aisle if you wouldn't find. Raise your neighbor's hand for me, please. Raise your neighbor's hand. And this is the international sign for victory. Raise your neighbor's hand higher. <laughs> See, as, as you help someone else go higher, what happens? You go higher too. We are all connected. So I want you to do me a favor. Um, I'm just going to ask for the music to be completely silent just for a moment. I don't want anyone to miss, miss this moment. Do me a favor. Just gently start to shake your neighbor's hand. God is stirring up some things in your life right now. <laughs> I just want you to shake your neighbor's hand so that they start to get ready. They got to get their hands ready for what God is about to put in their hand. Amen. Oh, you got to get their hand ready. You got to get their shoulders ready. Because God is about to drop a major blessing on your life. Come on, you got to get them ready. Because in their own strength, they couldn't get ready. But by you helping them. Oh, my, 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 my. This is the received it shape. <laughs> Getting ready to receive what God already has planned for me. Now, would you do me a favor? Would you give him a hand praise right now? Would you just praise him in advance? Would you just praise him in advance? Would you thank him in advance? Would you thank him in advance?